When's the best time to de-escalate in MS medicine? Should we do it at all? And do the rules change during a global viral pandemic? Don't turn away because I'm gonna answer those questions starting right now. Howdy, and thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. Now, for the last several years, there's been a debate ongoing amongst MS neurologists like myself. Some of us, not me, feel that when a person with MS reaches a certain chronologic age, we can take them off their disease-modifying therapy, citing things like, well, the immune system slows down as you get older, and maybe the medicines aren't as effective. When we study this, what we find is about a third of patients that stop their DMTs after the age of, let's say, 55 or 60, go on to have progression of neurological disability which is not okay. I do not believe in stopping a medicine because you age out of MS. I think that's nonsense. But I do agree with the concept of de-escalating the medicine, going from something that might be high efficacy, higher risk, to something that is arguably less efficacious, but safer. And that's what I wanna tackle during this video with a lens of what do we do during a global viral pandemic? Because I do think that's impacted the way that we practice MS neurology. Let's Quick disclaimer, this is not me giving you medical advice. This is literally me giving you my opinion on this topic. You must talk to your clinician about what's right for you. With any therapeutic, any drug, and certainly any MS drug, we're constantly weighing the risk of taking the medicine, so the safety, tolerability concerns of that medicine against the efficacy, the anticipated benefit of the medicine. And oftentimes when we're using medicines that are immunosuppressant in nature, and there's a lot of really effective MS medicines that are immunosuppressants, the risk side of the equation has to deal with infection. Now, that takes on a whole new light when we're practicing MS neurology and living our day-to-day -day lives during a global viral pandemic. I'm making this video during the third year of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's May of 2022. Now, am I suggesting that we simply avoid highly effective immunosuppressants during this pandemic? No, that is not what I'm saying. On the contrary, the vast majority of families that I work with, the risk benefit still favors using highly effective medicines. But there are situations where the risk side of the equation has grown too big, and we feel collectively that the right thing to do is to de-risk that person's situation. And so there are two medicines that have risen to the top when I'm considering de-escalation that I'm using increasingly when I'm trying to de-risk. Real quick before we go on, if you like this video, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you. There are two medicines that have risen to the top when I'm considering de-escalation that I'm using increasingly when I'm trying to de-risk. One of them is teraflutamide or abagio. The other one is cladribine or mavenclad. So let's talk about both of these medicines with a lens of de-risking and de-escalating. Here we go. I have several videos on this channel about Abagio. I'll throw a card up here in case you wanted to check one of those out. In a nutshell, Abagio is a small molecule. It's a pill that you take once a day, and it, it is not cytotoxic. It doesn't kill cells. It's cytostatic, so it holds cells in the freeze game and disallows them from rapidly reproducing. Which cells? The white blood cells. So when you take Abagio, you're slowing down the white blood cell's ability to rapidly reproduce, and as a result, it decreases the activity of autoimmunity. The important thing with Abagio is it doesn't really increase the risk of infection substantially. It's not an immunosuppressant, and this is a real upside during a global pandemic. I also would like to point out, whereas Abagio is not a rock star at decreasing attack rate and decreasing new MRI lesions, it is really, really effective at slowing brain volume loss and slowing disability progression. And so when you're dealing with someone with MS, they are no longer 30, maybe they're closer to 60. The concerns about their MS are less and less about new attacks and new MRI spots and more and more about brain volume loss and progression. The same person, because they've uh, grown a little older, have an increased risk of infection or a more severe infection because of age. And so 
a abagio in this location makes a lot of sense because we're de-risking the infection piece and we still have efficacy where we think it's needed. And so this is a therapeutic that I reach for in the so-called second half of the disease with some frequency in patients that we're trying to de-risk. Abagio is an option. More recently, I've become increasingly interested in using Mavenclad in this exact same population. Now, Mavenclad is an interesting drug. I call it microinduction. You take a pill once a day for five days in a row, and then you're done for the month. The next month, you take a pill a day for five days in a row, and then you're done for the year, which is weird. On the anniversary, you repeat that whole process once, five days the first month, five days the second month, and then you're done being treated unless you have new disease activity. So you're taking 10 pills the first year, 10 pills the second year. What you're doing with Mavenclad is you're rebooting the immune response in this microinduction mechanism. And it's really interesting to consider doing this with someone towards the second half of their disease. So let's take a hypothetical of someone who's, let's just say 64, 65 years old. Let's say for the sake of the discussion, they're on a B cell depleter and they're doing well, but they're increasingly concerned about the risk profile of being on that medicine during a pandemic with them growing older each year. So we might consider Mavenclad. They take this induction pill and their immune system is suppressed for a short period of time. We're talking months. And it's not a complete suppression with Mavenclad. We're not dropping the cells down to nothing. We're pulsing them down and back up, pulsing them down and back up. As a result, it turns out that people treated with Mavenclad do not have an increased risk of a more severe infection if they get COVID. And it doesn't appear that it interferes with mounting vaccine responses. So for these two reasons, applying Mavenclad in this population has an increased benefit during the pandemic. At least that's my opinion. And after you've done the microinduction, the person's now 65, 66 years old, their MS has been treated, they're not required to take an ongoing medicine. And four months after the microinduction, their cell lines are normal. They can mount responses to new vaccines or to new infections. It also doesn't close the door if the disease were to be more active, the MS, and then we needed to treat again, we have lots of options. And so I have found using Mavenclad in this location to be really super as well. Am I recommending that all people over the age of blank switch off their high efficacy medicine? No, absolutely not. I'm talking about where the collective decision is that we need to de-risk. And I have found that using Abagio and using Mavenclad in this position has worked really well in my clinic. If you'd like to hear more about philosophy of treatment, click the video that's on your screen right now. Until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.